Is the ketogenic diet in the first week after injury proven to be beneficial for brain recovery? Has it been proven? No. Is it interesting? Yes. So there's not enough studies done on humans yet, but there's been some animal trials on traumatic brain injury, meaning all spectrums of traumatic brain injury, not just concussion. That's where the things get confusing because a severe traumatic brain injury and a mild traumatic brain injury are two different things. Concussion is a mild traumatic brain injury. Severe traumatic brain injury uh, or moderate traumatic brain injury are very different elements. But in animal studies, eating a ketogenic diet in a, uh, a rodent model following traumatic brain injury has been found to mitigate the risk of suffering from neurodegenerative diseases such as um, uh, where we add here Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, and also with um, epilepsy. In humans, ketogenic diet has been used for epilepsy and also inflammation and dietary things are thought to lead to Alzheimer's. And so ketogenic diet may have a place in that in general, but there isn't a lot of human studies on this. The fact that it has been found to be potentially protective for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, we then should be thinking, I wonder if it could be protective for things like CTE. We know that after concussion, there's um, inflammation in the brain that happens. You get activation of microglial cells in the brain which promote inflammation. That inflammation can linger and actually bring more inflammation to the area which can start to damage some of the healthy tissue around, which then brings more inflammation, which then brings more inflammation, and so on and so on and so on, and you get this cyclical response. Having a way to reduce inflammation, which a lot of times it's sugar, carbs, uh, and things like that that promote inflammatory responses, this is one of the reasons why ketogenic might be helpful is going into a state of ketosis, relying on ketone bodies uh, to fuel the brain might be beneficial in squashing inflammation. Um, again, needs more research, especially in the human model, but in animal models, shown some positive potential. Now, I have a study here on concussion specifically. This is a recent one, and it is from Zhang et al. in 2018, and they looked at proton magnetic spectroscopy, which looks at um, the levels of energy, basically ATP levels within the brain uh, through N-acetyl aspartate. So this looks at the metabolic levels of concussion recovery. This has been used to look at concussion recovery in humans, finding that period of vulnerability, finding the level of metabolic recovery. Uh, there's been a lot of studies out of Italy that have used this particular technology. So what this group did is they had uh, three groups and group one was a sham injury, so they didn't receive a concussion at all and they were given a regular diet for a rat. Uh, group two, was given three concussions spaced out by 24 hours each. So three concussions back to back to back, 24 hours apart, also given a normal rat diet. Then group three was also given three concussions spaced out by 24 hours each, but they were put on a ketogenic diet that started the day of the injury. So they were fed a normal diet up to the day of the injury, and then at the point of injury, they were started on keto friendly diet. They gave them just fat, high fat, low carb, ketogenic diet. Animals were then put through motor tests such as balance beam, modified beam walking. They were given a standard MRI and also MR spectroscopy to look at the level of energy in the brain because concussion causes a drop in ATP that comes back over time and that's how you dictate the recovery of concussion. All animals were studied for seven days after the final injury, so the typical recovery for a rat on a metabolic standpoint is about five days, just so you know. So five days for that NAA to drop down and come back up to full levels. So they were followed for seven days after the final injury and then killed and processed and put under staining to look at the brain and look at the extent of the damage. They had these studies that were done in vivo, in life, and then also post-mortem studies to look at actual pathology in the brain. And here's what they found. No differences between any of the rats before the concussions happened. Animals fed with a ketogenic diet displayed elevated ketosis. So we know that they were actually getting into a state of ketosis. So they had um, beta hydroxybutyrate levels that indicated that. At day one after injuries, both 
both injured groups performed worse than the sham group on their beam walking and everything else. Um, at um, After seven days, the ketogenic group was significantly better than the normal diet group on beam walking and beam balance tasks. So they were better functionally, and this was significant statistically in both regards. On spectroscopy, it was found that seven days after the concussion, the NAA levels were significantly reduced in the normal diet group uh, versus the sham injured. So the group that didn't get an injury, the normal diet group had significantly reduced levels of ATP, NAA, but the ketogenic diet group was significantly better than the group that was getting normal food sources. So their energy levels had actually boosted up, and they only started it the day of injury. Uh, staining after the concussion found that microglial expression, uh, which is associated with neurodegeneration, in the ketogenic diet was actually upregulated. It actually improved, um, it was, so it was protective against potential future neurodegeneration. So again, animal study, we need human studies. So, but is it proven? No. Is it interesting? Yes. And more research needs to be done in the area because it could be potentially protective for A, concussion recovery, and B, the long-term neurodegenerative effects that are thought to be due to concussion.